All right, man, peace. So NBA superstar and future Hall of Famer Dwayne Wade recently has decided to accept a demotion to the Cleveland Cavalier bench. Of course, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Antonietta, appreciate you. So Wade requests to come off the Cavs bench saying, why wait? Stephen A., what is the deal? Well, the deal is, is that J.R. Smith can't handle coming off the bench. That's exactly what it is. Uh, the real issue is not that Dwayne Wade is necessarily getting demoted. It's just Dwayne once again showing his magnanimous nature and agreeing to come off of the bench because of the mental fragility of one J.R. Smith, uh, an entity who has shown wherever he's gone that he is quick to implode if he's not given a certain amount of attention. Uh, he's another man-child in the professional sports world. Let's just call it what it is. I'm not being disrespectful to J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith elevated his level of play to being the best perimeter defender on the team. Uh, Which really is not saying much because everybody knows Cleveland can't guard the, can't guard a statue. Uh, two key uh, three-point shots in Game 7, the year they won the title. He had something to do with in that third quarter. They basically sparked them when they were going through their doldrums at that particular point in time. Dropped 25 in Game uh, 5 last year uh, when they lost Game 5 of the NBA Finals but showed up. But the first games, 1 and 2, he was awful. Uh, but to be specific, here's the deal. J.R. Smith is a champion. J.R. Smith has been the starting guard. J.R. Smith is a member of a championship team. Uh, there's a difference between being a champion and being a member of a championship team, uh, particularly in the NBA, Steve. You know, when you play baseball, everybody on the field can call themselves a champion because they all have to play a position. Uh, you know, baseball is much more of a team sport. When you play basketball, like I said, it's like a, it's, it's like a rock band or any other type of band. You have the lead singer, you you have the superstar members of the band. And then everybody else pretty much just, you know, just has to stay in tune. JR, I wouldn't call him a champion. I call him a member of a championship team. If, if you know, if you want to uh, stretch or elongate um, that type of definition of champion to include somebody like him, I guess you can. I mean, he was, it wasn't like he, he was on the end of the bench. But he's not somebody, when I think of a champion per se, it's somebody who goes to another team and can raise or elevate the level of that team that he goes to. That's not JR. Okay? There are certain players who have been on championship teams and they go to another team and they can change, you know, they can change the overall DNA of the team that they go to and raise it up to another level. JR is just a nut job who was very fortunate to be on a championship team, a team that had LeBron James and Kyrie Irving on it. And when Dwayne Wade came, people are looking at Dwayne Wade right now and they're saying, yeah, you started you know, all your career. You're a three-time champion, an NBA Finals MVP, a surefire future Hall of Famer. None of that is to be questioned. But you are 35. You have lost a step. You're not the youngster that you once was. And here this guy is. He's a champion who's played the off-guard spot, who, by the way, came in in the off-season and was busting his tail, working out early, working out hard and doing... Look, all that is nice. J.R. Smith on his best day is not Dwayne Wade. On his best day, he's not Dwayne Wade. Um, can Dwayne necessarily can Dwayne necessarily stretch the floor like a J.R. Smith? Not necessarily, but J.R. Smith is a streak shooter. He's not necessarily a great outside shooter. But Dwayne Wade once again is showing his magnanimous nature, just like I stated initially. He's smart enough to know that you can't treat everybody the same way, and it wouldn't surprise me if he took LeBron aside and spoke about it with LeBron. And LeBron is close to J.R. Maybe LeBron relayed some of the fears or some of the trepidations that J.R. Smith had and Dwayne Wade said, okay, you know what? I know what I'll do. I'll just go to the bench because I've already had my glory. And if my presence here is going to affect him to this degree, I don't want it to be anything that, you know, could possibly have a, um, you know, result in some type of alteration in our potentiality to win a championship. So that's really all that was about doing everything that, that you wanted him to do. Then they acquired Dwayne Wade, and Dwayne Wade is LeBron's boy, and they're very, very tight. So when LeBron, Dwayne Wade was inserted into the starting lineup, you could visually see J.R. Smith sulking. I'm at the Boston game, the opener, where Gordon Hayward had that just terrible injury, and we all wish him the best. 
J.R. Smith was on the bench in the fourth quarter of that game with the hoodie on. He was sulking. He was upset. And one of the things that I said to a few people, even prior to the season, when it was announced that D-Wade would be starting, was that this is going to be tough. I think that D-Wade can, can deal with a reserve role more so than J.R. could. At this point, J.R. psychologically was going to be warped. It was going to be a problem. J.R. Smith is somebody who's always been psychologically warped. Um, I know here in New York, when he was with the Knicks, he had a lot of issues um, with his conduct, with his behavior. And that really is just a reflection of uh, his mental acuity and his mental stability. You know, a lot of these guys are, are going around. When I say these guys, I'm talking about it in professional sports. A lot of them have mental problems and they cover them due to their proficiency uh, in athletics. People give them a pass. You know, this is why they have team psychiatrists and things of that nature. Now, a lot of the team psychiatrists are set up to assist the team in certain mind control programming that's used to make sure that the players can stay focused on the court. But they're also used to assist players in their in their everyday doldrums and um, mental problems. A lot of these guys are very irresponsible. They've been catered to for most of their life, really since they're really since they you know hit puberty. You know, they have a lot of girl issues, uh, relationship problems, I should say, um, fiscal problems, maintaining their money because they've never been forced to sit down and actually uh, prioritize things. A guy like a J.R. Smith, you know, interestingly enough, he's not your stereotypical uh, mentally fragile dude. You know, one would think that he would have come from a from an, you know, a relatively unstable background. But he had a you know, he had a mother and a father. He had a nice home out there in Jersey. So, you know, he's just somebody who's, you know, he just has issues mentally. And, you know, people who are in the know know what I'm talking about. He's had, you know, problems with, uh, you know, I believe he got into a car crash a while ago racing. Uh, he's had other issues in, in clubs here in New York. You know, fortunately, the issue with his daughter uh, has been, you know, has gone by the wayside. Everything seems to be all right with that. But that's probably another reason why Dwayne Wade was sensitive to this issue and said, you know what, let me sit down. JR has gone through a lot in the offseason. Uh, I don't want to add on to any type of mental burden that he has or, or mental baggage. So I'll just chill. But it wasn't going to last long. And somebody asked me why. And I said, the D-Wade that I've known for years, I, I tell people this all the time, no matter what you think about him as a player, he's an even better person. And he's the kind of guy that's going to sit up there and say, if I can't get it done or if I'm a detriment to the team, I'll step back. He'll do that. It's not going to be easy because he's got his own pride and his own ego. And I'm quite sure it wasn't an easy decision. I'm not even sure it was one totally made by him. Yes, I think that Steve is alluding to what I just said. I believe that, you know, he probably Dwayne Wade, you know, he's not a maverick. He's not going to just say I'm, I'm, I'm stepping down. He's going to speak to LeBron. I'm sure he spoke to Ty Lue and um, maybe even the GM. But really just Ty Lue and, and LeBron and said, look, um, this is what I think should be done. Because I don't want this to have a trickle-down effect on what we're trying to do here. Because they do have a stacked squad. When you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers team, <laughs> they got D-Rose, they, uh, they got LeBron, they got D-Wade, they, they got Kevin Love. I mean, how many all-stars or former all-stars do they have on their team? They got Isaiah Thomas. I mean, like, that's five guys right there that have been on the all-star team. And have and, and I believe four of them have started. I can't remember if Isaiah Thomas started or not. But four out of the five that I know for a fact have started on the all-star team in the near past. But what I can tell you is that he's a man and he's a grown-up. And he's the kind of person that's not going to just look at himself. He's going to look at, I'm averaging six points on 28% shooting from the field. And in the meantime, this dude just finished shooting one for six in 20 minutes in a loss to Orlando. And I know that he's better than that. He's being affected by coming off the bench. Hell with it. I'll deal with it better. And I think that played a role in the decision. I have not spoken to D-Wade about this yet. I haven't spoken to Coach Tyron Lue about it. All right. Well, why don't you get your ass on the phone and call him? What the hell are you waiting on? You got all these connections, why don't you use them? You better hurry up and call before D-Wade call your ass up and read you the riot act like Melo did. <laughs> Had you on TV shook. All right, or JR, but I am telling you, 
based on what I know coming into this season, it's easy to deduce this is what happened. Dwayne Wade does what it takes to win. When people say the veterans and all this, the champions, they know how to win, this is part of what they mean. Let's not forget, Dwayne Wade won finals MVP with the best performance in a finals that anyone had between Jordan's and LeBron's best finals. That includes everyone. Dwayne Wade was the best player I saw in an NBA finals between Jordan and LeBron. That well, he's had the best finals performance of anybody other than Jordan. Uh, in the finals performances that I've seen, and I've been watching the NBA finals since 1990. First finals I watched was the Pistons and the, and the Trailblazers in 1990. Uh, the best finals performances that I've seen were uh, Jordan's first three finals performances in the first three, Pete. Uh, um, Shaq in 2000 against the, uh, the Pacers. Shaq also against the, uh, the Sixers. Uh, Elijah Wan against the Magic. Dwayne Wade against uh, the Mavericks. You know, all those are right up there in regards to performance from beginning to end of series. Now, LeBron in 2016 had a phenomenal last four games of the series. Um, I really don't count last year. I think that he just ran up a bunch of stats and they got their asses kicked. I mean, I, I really can't count your great finals performance unless you win the series. So those are the great finals performances that I could think of off the, to off the top of my head where they were, you know, the person just dominated from beginning to end and they won the series. That includes Shaq and Kobe. He had a better fine. I mean, he was on fire, single-handedly destroyed the Mavericks. That guy, that was before LeBron got there. Then he won two more with LeBron, deferring to LeBron when Wade was still one of the best three or four players in the world. Oh, and let me, let me also throw in KD. KD's performance last year is up there with a lot of those great performances as well. Brings in his guy and gives him the team basically selfless selfless even when he went to chicago Stephen a had chicago not been hurt in the playoffs this last year who the hell knows they were pretty good like wade figures out oh, dwayne wade's team seem to make playoff runs don't they with and without lebron they seem to be uh oh you got to keep your eye on that team and now he gets to cleveland and the fact is even if jr smith could handle coming off the bench Stephen a i think they're better with dwayne wade on the bench they're better with dwayne wade running the second unit i I agree. I think that I think that wherever you put Dwayne, he's going to fit in fine because of his high basketball IQ. He's not going to make stupid plays. Uh, he's not going to sit out there and jack up threes uh, in clutch situations. You know, he, you know that he's a great clutch performer. Um, he's going to take it to the rack, which means you're going to get a lot of foul calls, things like that. You know, he can bring a lot of stability to the second team that Jr. is not going to bring. Jr. is not going to bring stability anywhere. You know, so he needs to be babysat. I think. And Jr. giving that first unit more spacing. You know, the one thing Dwayne Wade could never do is shoot. That's the only thing he couldn't do. He could play defense. He's not a three-point shooter. A three-point, right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Spreading the floor with the, with the three-point shot. That's the one thing he couldn't do. The only thing he really couldn't do. He could play defense. He could finish at the rim. He could play point for you. He could do all kinds of stuff. But he couldn't shoot the three, really. His, his ability to suck the defense out... Or his ability to draw defensive attention helped keep, you know, open guys up around the floor, but it's not because of his shooting. When you have J.R. Smith, although he's a very streaky shooter, but a much better defender, as you said, as a 3 and D guy, not a guy who thinks he needs to put it on the floor like he might in the second unit, because he's not great at that. But if he's strictly a 3 and D guy, think about the Cavs starting five when Isaiah gets back. Can Isaiah shoot? Yup. Can J. Yeah, but Isaiah cannot defend. That's the problem. Can J.R. Smith shoot? Yup. Can LeBron shoot? He's not a pure shooter, but he has his spots from the floor where he can hit us and from three, on, you know, on the perimeter, on the right side. Can, can, can Kevin Love shoot? Can Crowder shoot? All of a sudden, the Cavs can put five shooters on the floor where it makes sense and really do something interesting offensively. I think J.R. Smith helps him there. I think D-Wade's better off the bench. Here's, here's, here's the issue. Here's the, no, no, I think Dwayne Wade should come off the bench. I think that's the right thing because I think he can handle it better than J.R. And more importantly, I think that's D-Wade's future. I think that D-Wade can play in the league for two or three more years if he's coming off the bench. But if he tries to be a starter, this is it. That's the way I look at it. To prolong his career and to make additional dollars, I think D-Wade is better served coming off the bench that's number one number two well he, he's better served coming off the bench on a good team on a team like cleveland yeah 
that's why, you know, and that's another reason why uh, the signing of Dwayne Wade was a very good strategic move by the Cleveland Cavaliers because this man inspired LeBron James to stay. I mean, we'll see. Number two, I also think that D. Wade was hurt by the fact that Derrick Rose is your starting point guard because Isaiah Thomas is injured. If Isaiah Thomas is your point guard because of his ability to step away from the basket and hit the long-range shot, that's, that contributes to spreading the floor, which gives D. Wade room, wiggle room to do damage. This is the kind of guy... This is the Their second unit is going to be breaking ankles, though. When Derrick Rose get back and with, with D. Wade and him on the second unit, they're going to be breaking ankles. That team is going to be a problem. Like, you know, if Cleveland wins the championship this year, you know, a lot of LeBron James's uh, worshippers are going to say, oh, you know, yeah, look at what LeBron did. He beat the greatest. He beat uh, Golden State, the greatest team. Look, LeBron has been on the most stacked team in the NBA since 2010. All right. Every year he has been on the most talented team in the NBA. I don't want to hear no bullshit. This is the kind of thing that you got to pay attention to. But ultimately, what this comes down to, and I'll deal with this later on in the show, it's about J.R. Smith because now, unlike times in the past, there's more pressure on him. Because the reality is we all saw you sulking. We all saw you upset and disappointed that you weren't in the starting lineup. Well, guess what? When he's hot, when he's focused, and he's making things happen... J.R. Smith can make a profound difference on Cleveland's success or lack thereof. Oh, well, I agree with that. When when J.R. is focused, when he's locked in, but it's hard for him to be focused or locked in because that's just not his nature. Uh, he's a mercurial dude. He's all over the place. It's very, very, very difficult for him to hone in on a certain goal. That's why he needs to be on a certain team. You know, J.R. reminds me a lot of Dennis Rodman to a degree. You know. When they're in the right environment, you know, like they had to place Dennis Rodman and it's not to digress, but Dennis had to be on teams with coaches that had mind control training that understood mind manipulation. People like Chuck Daly, who had a CIA background, uh, Phil Jackson, who had a fundamentalist uh, Christian background and also a, a mind control background uh, with a lot of his teachings. He had to be in those environments in order to keep him focused. When he tried to go on other teams, whether it was San Antonio or uh, L.A. later on, they, they couldn't handle him. Because there's certain things that you have to say to somebody like a Dennis Rodman or a J.R. Smith in a certain way to keep them, you know, corralled in. If not, they're going to create entropy in your entire environment. They have to be removed. Uh, so because you wanted this so badly, because remember right now, First three games this season, Cleveland's 2-1, and one, got blown out by Orlando, a team that we might need to watch. Let's keep our eyes on something here. J.R. Smith's averaging six points. J.R. Smith is shooting 33% from the field, 15% from three-point range. This is a career 37% shooter from three-point range. He shoot 15%. Why? That means you don't want to play. And now that he's going to be back in the starter lineup, he has to show that he wants to be out there, particularly with somebody like D-Wade being on the bench and being an individual willing to say, OK, I'll sit on the bench. I agree with that. Now that D-Wade is taking a step back, JR has to, you know, JR is really going to have to show out, OK, because they basically have burped him, gave him his baby bottle and said, are you happy now? So now he has to be quiet for the rest of the night. Their size and natural talent, there's no reason that. Dwayne Wade should be go a first ballot Hall of Famer and J.R. Smith a player, you know, a, a, a jag, just the guy. I, I said this before. If you if you were to look at Dwayne Wade and J.R. Smith and, and look at their measurables, you know, leaping ability and, and explosiveness and raw athletic ability, they're supposed to be the same guy. That's why, you know, man, you can never underestimate how important the mental aspect of success is not just in sports but in life because you can have two people who are equally gifted and the greatest gift that you can have is to focus to want to maximize whatever your gift is i right but that's what they are and a lot of that is upstairs thank you sir Dwayne wade is a champion the mentality of a champion and jr smith's if his personality was like Dwayne wade's he'd be a first ballot hall of famer why not absolutely uh, J.R. Smith certainly has a personality no, And there's no disrespect to the brother He certainly has a personality disorder And you have people like that And it just means that they need to be assisted He could jump out the building He could, out the gym He could he could shoot the three He could finish at the, at, at the rack He can shoot free throws He can defend now There's no reason But his mentality is not Dwayne Wade's mentality They better become that 
Yeah, Wade's making it about team. Um, he's playing 24 minutes per game, by far the lowest, and made 7 of 25 shots this season. When All right, so now let's see what uh, Skip and Shannon have to say about the Dwayne Wade situation with J.R. Smith and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Let's move on to the NBA. Dwayne Wade has volunteered to move from the starting lineup to the bench after the high expectations of Wade returning with LeBron. The 12-time All-Star is only averaging about six points per game. Let's take a listen to Ty Lue and Wade on the decision. I came here for one reason. I didn't come here to shoot 20 shots, so I averaged 20 points. Uh, I came here to be a part of winning and, and to bring what I can uh, to this team, and I want to do that. You know, I want to feel that my best opportunity to do that. Is it that so it just came down there. When well, he came to me and said, you know what, coach, you know what you said was right. You know, I'd be able to you know, be featured more in the first lineup and I'd be able to handle the ball. I mean, second unit, I'd be able to handle the ball more. So um, let's make that move and make that adjustment. So um, he came to me after the game the other night. So um, that's what professionals do. And, you know, no ego. And he saw what's best for the team for him to come off the bench. So um, but it was just call. And um, here we are. Well, Ty Lue said that it was his call, but I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure that it was numerous people uh, whose decision it was in concert with Dwayne's. Shannon, will this work? Yes. And before I go any further, this was the look at me, Skip Bader. Stop writing. Look at me, goddammit. I was in on this meeting. I sat down with Braun and D. Wade and J.R. and Coach Lou. I told him, look. Back when I was on the Broncos, there was a nigga just like you, D-Wade, that wanted my spot. And I told his ass, you know, it's okay if you can take my spot as long as you can run my routes. You can't run the routes no more, D-Wade, so sit your ass down. Let JR play, and you come off the bench. You know, everybody who agrees say aye. Everybody said aye. So that's how the decision was made. This was the Wayne Wade's decision. LeBron James. A.K.A. the King had no input on this decision. Wait, is it my... Yeah, that's Shannon saying that. Shannon, Shannon said he's the one who had the final say. Shannon had the final say. He was in on the meeting. Is it my turn? No! Oh. I just want you to know, because I know what you're going to say. His good friend LeBron James went to him. He did not. No, it's Coach James. LeBron oh. James had... <laughs> Coach James. Look, LeBron has something to do with it. I'm sure that he spoke with Dwayne. Dwayne spoke with him, and they came to a consensus. You know, that's how you make decisions as teammates. And you know that they have a brotherly bond. So I'm, I'm sure that you know. I'm sure that LeBron was in the know. I don't know why Shannon feels the need to protect him so heavily for, but you know, he knows that LeBron was in on it. He's a team captain. It's had no input. D Wade realizing why wait 15, 20 games. I see where this is heading right now in three games. So wait, did Ty Lue just say that they told me what to do and I'm I'm okay with it? Cause they, Ain't no they. Well, now what he just, we just heard Ty Lue say that. He said Dwayne Wade came to him mm. and said, Coach, I think I would be better in the second unit. Mm. He needs the ball. LeBron is going to have the ball. Mm. The, and, and before Derrick Rose got hurt, Derrick Rose was handling the ball. Yeah, that but and and that's going to be something that I'm going to wonder about when D Rose does come back and and him and Dwayne are playing the second unit together. Uh, they play a very similar style of basketball, so it's going to be interesting to see how they mesh. Cleveland overall, the problem that I see with Cleveland, they have more overall talent than Golden State does, but the way that they move the ball is not as uh, is not as free flowing as Golden State is. They're not natural. Uh, they're not guys who naturally move the ball well. Even LeBron, as spectacular a passer as he is, he is a ball monopolizer. And that's going to be very dangerous for them because they have a lot of guys who like to dribble, dribble, dribble. LeBron, uh, D. Wade, Derrick Rose, Isaiah Thomas, J.R., they all love to have the ball and dribble, 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 dribble. So, I mean, we'll see. But look, top to bottom, Cleveland has by far the most talented team in the NBA. You know, you, you, They also got Kyle, Cor Kyle Corver, Jay Crowder, Tristan Thompson. I mean, they, they are stacked. So D. Wade is not an off-the-ball type player. Mm. He needs to have the ball. So with the second unit, he will have the ball. They will run the offense through him. J.R. goes back into his starting spot. Mm. I believe this benefits both of them. This is what I explained to all of them when we sat down at the meeting, Skip. You know, I, I when I flew over to Cleveland, when I dealt with Double T, I, I'm the one who put that little bug in his ear. I said, you know, Dwayne, you... You served your country well the last 14 years. 
But right now, me and my man, we going for number four. We trying to catch Jordan. And I, we can't let nobody mess with this. Ask Double T, I had to put my foot up his ass. And I'm not going to let you fuck with what we planning. And look, it's no disrespect. You know, I'm, I'm not still mad about that whole banana boat thing. You know, I should have been invited. But, you know, I saw what you were trying to do. Uh, next time, we better be a very, you know, better be a longer banana so I could fit on it. I don't like to see my man on no damn banana with uh, people other than me or Savannah. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Point being at this, you better get your ass on the bench because we're not playing this year. We even got some guys who can stretch the flow, okay? And I can't play anymore. You know, my knees are no good. So we got to have some shooters. JR can now find the rhythm because LeBron is going to be looking for those skill passes because mm. they revamped their entire offense. Rose is not a three-point shooter. D. Wade is not a three-point shooter. Now they can collapse the floor and prevent LeBron from uh, driving the ball. Now when he goes to the ball, uh, basket and they try to collapse, now you know LeBron's the master of that snap that snap hammer pass, mm. skip bounce pass. You mean the one that Ginobili invented? Oh, look, we're not talking. We're talking well, about he, he Clint. Did, Ian. Nobody talking about no damn Ginobili. We talking about my man. I said to, I said to skip hammer pass. You know, somebody need to hammer your head. He invented it. He invented it. Okay. Sorry. There are a lot of people that invented a lot of things. Yeah. But who perfected it? Mm. Who makes it look? Ginobili did. No, he did. Yeah, he did. Look, I'm tired of you trying to diminish mm. LeBron. Mm. I, I didn't I even mean, said a word about LeBron. Did. I said he was the head okay. coach. Did. Is that, Jory, no. help me out. Am I diminishing LeBron James yes. by calling him the head coach? Because Ty Lue is no, the head coach. That's, that's he's what he it. You know who the hell the head coach is. It's head coach Sharp. I just come here just to go back and forth with your ass, you know? Make a little extra money for the family. But I'm the one coaching the damn team. Stop playing games. You know, I showed you the clipboard yesterday. Before the show. I know I make up all the plays. Me and Bron, but right, you know, right before we go to bed. You know? Me and him, you know, we draw up some plays, diagram them. You know, about 10.30, we got to turn the lights out because Savannah got to get up early in the morning with the kids. Assistant coach. LeBron James. The GM, the Jordan. He's manager, everything. Jordan. He runs the franchise. Jordan. That's all. Physical that's all therapist. You see? You see what yeah. you guys do? You Nutritionist. Got traveling secretary. Mm -hmm. He does all that. You know? This was the D-Way's decision. He realized that he yeah. realized that it was not working out the way he thought it would with him being in the starting lineup, considering that he's a not an off the ball type player. Mm. He needs the ball to be most effective. And the way he can help the Cavaliers the most is to come off the bench with that second unit, have the ball, and have him initiate the offense. Well, part of what Shannon is saying is true, but really D Wade plans on just chilling right now for the whole season. He wants to chill and he knows that his name and his number is going to be called in big spots in the playoffs, particularly when JR starts to implode. It wouldn't shock me to see D Wade get a lot of clutch minutes in the playoffs, uh, if, especially if JR is not doing well. Um, and D Wade knows that is his time. He's a big time player in big moments. So he doesn't need to go through another 82 game stretch. He's not fitting up be arguing over JR Smith over playing time in the regular season. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. You know, he scored over 20,000 points. He's a three time champion. Dwayne Wade is not thinking about going back and forth with no damn J.R. Smith. Kudos to Dwayne Wade. It's not an easy thing when you've been a very good, to, a great player, and D. Wade has been great, to have to deal with your own sports mortality. Mm. He realizes that he's not the Dwayne Wade of five years ago, and that's to be commended mm. for him to see that and, and set his ego aside and say, you know what, I can bicker and say, no, I'm not coming out of the starting lineup, mm. but... You know, when you go back and you watch some of Dwayne Wade's old highlights from, from his prime, yo, it's shocking how fast that man was. Like, it's almost like you almost do a double take when you watch some of his games highlights from like 05, 06, around that time period. I mean, his, his explosiveness uh, going either way, left or right, and just jumping over people at the rim, unbelievable. I mean, right now, he's, he's a serviceable NBA player, but back then, it was just like, wow. But that doesn't help this team. I'm here to help this team win, not score 20, not get 20 shots. I commend Dwayne Wade. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to have something to say about my boy, but that's okay. I, I don't have it. That's okay. You can talk shit. Talk shit now. You know, come 2018, around June, you'll be at the parade. You know? We'll have you uh, passing out water to the crowd you know, while I'm driving the fire truck with uh, LeBron on top of the fire truck, you know, taking in all the glory with the crown on his head, just how he's supposed to. I have anything to say. This is about Dwayne, not about LeBron. Well, give him kudos then. 
Give who kudos? Don't. What you mean it's not about LeBron? Look at the damn question. Question says right move for Cavs to separate LeBron and Dwayne Wade. You think you slick, huh? No, you the one who made up the question this morning on the chalkboard. With your dumb ass. Dwayne Wade! Oh. Well, I, I have. I told you the only reason I didn't pick Boston to win the East is because LeBron somehow convinced Dwayne Wade to forgive and forget that LeBron left him high and dry, left him for quote-unquote dead back in Miami after 2014 in which LeBron's Miami Heat got blown off the floor. Yo, Skip be talking about it like Dwayne Wade is Uma Thurman and Kill Bill, like, like LeBron killed his ass and left him in the coffin. The <laughs> floor by a record margin in five games you, by the San Antonio Spurs. I'm talking. Can I, I just want to ask you one question. Have you ever broken up with somebody been away for like two or three days, maybe even a week, mm. and gotten back together. Joe, you've done that, haven't you, Joe? You've broken up. We all have. I'm of course we all have. I mean, shit. I broke up with LeBron a couple months ago. I was tired of his ass. Putting all that damn Chia Pet shit on his head. I said, look, you just ball. Just accept it. If you can't accept that, you can't accept me and Savannah. I, I don't want to be with you no more. I'm going to the gym. Kiss my ass. You know, he texts me about two days later. We made up. That's how it go. I mean, shit, why, why are you so hard on a man for? I broke it up, Skip, like, I'm done with you. Get away from me. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, that mean it happens, Skip. I mean, if Nicole broke up with me and she said, baby, I want you back. Come on back. Mm. But she is not going to break up with you. I'm trying to figure out why Shannon keep running with this Nicole Murphy storyline, knowing damn well he's engaged to a white woman. I guess that's to impress his uh, his internet revolutionary fans. So he can make them think that, he, that he's with a black woman or he's infatuated with one. Nobody's ever broke up. Oh, they broke up with that. Skip, it happens. You're a Hall of Famer. That's okay. Uh, Skip, <laughs> this, this lady was married to Eddie Murphy. Well, yeah, well. She'll have no problem. First of all, she got to go out with a date. Yeah, back in there, Skip, go, if, if she go out with a date with your boy, Skip, you know it's over. I wouldn't even drink no yak on that date. Maybe. Now back to it. I love it if I can get out with, the, with Nicole Murphy, you know. Give, give your boy a chance. Give old Shay a chance. You know, me, you, Savannah, LeBron, we can all go on, on a four-person you know, four date. You can join the family. We got a nice little house out there in Akron. What you think? You, know, you can bring Eddie Murphy kids out there. We can all live together. Making one big happy commune. To reality? <laughs> oh, oh, no. What you trying to say, Skip? <laughs> I can't believe you. So back to the question at hand. I'm serious about this. This will not work i agree i agree with skip in the long run it's not going to work because i think it's just going to be too many guys who want to dribble the ball too much it's all going to be dependent on tyrone lou um or tyron lou he was unable to implement any form of ball movement offense last year i don't see him being able to do it this year plus ball domination and just in lebron's dna wow Dwayne wade is not built to come off nobody's bench i'm sorry it's just mentality it's it's your self-image it's your self-worth it's just who he is and who he is not he is not a come off the bench guy now i mentioned ginobili you realize going all the way back to 2011 pop said i need you to come off the bench and manu ginobili with four rings he didn't he, he was going to get one more but he had three at that point but he has right. four now and he led the biggest upset in Olympic basketball history back in 2004 when Argent the, the Argentines beat everybody, including us, yes. to win the gold medal. It was incredible. So that's a legacy that he has. But he said... Yeah, but he also beat a team in 2004 that, I mean, had a bunch of nut jobs on it that really didn't know how to win. Uh, they had a lot of talent, but they didn't know how to win. I mean, that team had AI and... Um, you know, I believe that I believe that LeBron was on that team, you know, as a young pup, and you know they they didn't know what they were doing, you know. But I mean, it is what it is. He said in 2011, "Okay, I'll come off the bench," and he still comes off the bench, and he still lights the fire. Even last night against Toronto, I watched the whole game. I had it on opposite Monday Night Football. Had the sound down, like Shannon Sharp watched the Had the sound up on ESPN on the Monday. Why you listen to the sound? Why you need to know what they talking about? Cause you know, yeah, you can't hear no way to old ass. Why you, oh, I know why you got to turn the sound up because you you know your miracle ear starting to go out. Why don't you go down to the uh, to the ear doctor and get that shit fixed? Cause I'm tired of repeating myself to your old ass. You 
you know what you're watching. I, I know and like John Gruden, and I want to hear what he has to say about the game. You see, he had his pants cinched up like Jeff Bodine. No, I did not see that, but he's, thanks to his brother, he and his brother are on a new weight loss kick, and they've helped each other out. And he thanked his brother on live TV last night for helping. Well, how about if you're going to lose weight, shouldn't you buy clothes that's appropriate? You don't wear the same clothes. Well, he's being thrifty. Well, shit, I remember when LeBron went back to Cleveland, uh, you know, after that season when he lost all that weight, you know, when he left Miami. He stopped going to that clinic. I said, baby, why don't you, uh, you, know, why don't you start shopping a little bit more size appropriate? You're looking like a crackhead. You know, why don't you start buying a little, you know, more form-fitting clothes? No, this is not the late 90s. Why all your clothes look baggy for? Oh, I know, because you stopped going to buy all Genesis. You know, getting that, getting that magical potion. That's okay. I'm going to get you back in the gym get you right. Like, Gee. sometimes when you Miley. see the light and all of a sudden you start losing weight because it's not that hard to change. If you change, you will start to lose. Yeah, and, like, and all like the- man, you right, Skip. <clears throat> <laughs> You, go, you tried to cut me down again, Skip. I, see I didn't say doing. a word. I didn't say a word. Yeah. So, the, can we get back on track here? Okay. I, I, Keep talking shit about my body, Skip. I take off my shirt. I'm. Uh, there be a shadow over you. You won't even know where you at. All this black beauty I got. I think you're you're scrambling because you're you're backpedaling here because you know I'm right about this, Dwayne. I don't know shit. Dwayne belongs in the starting lineup. Coach James said from day one, I want Dwayne in the starting lineup. But Dwayne's pride has been hurt because what's he averaging? Six points, two rebounds, and three assists a game. I think also, I think that Dwayne has agreed to sit down, not just for, not just to alleviate J.R. Smith, but also because I think that Dwayne doesn't know what the hell is going on in the offensive game plan. So I think that just to make himself look a little less bad out there on the floor, he said, you know what, let me just sit my ass down. Uh, Sometimes when you when you sit on the bench, you get a chance to you know get a, a, a um, an outside view of what they're trying to execute on the floor, and maybe he can feel a little bit more comfortable in, in the scheme, whatever their offensive scheme is that they're running. Uh, I think that you know LeBron has a lot more control in this offense than he had over in Miami, so it's going to take it's going to take Dwayne Wade a bit of, you know a little bit of time to um you know to get engrafted into that system. Shooting 28% it's, from it's the floor. 28%? He's set. Yeah, but come on. You can't look at shooting percentage through five or six games. He's 7 of 25 overall. He doesn't shoot threes. We know that. No. He's just not a three-point shooter. So he's one for three from three, which is why he doesn't belong with the second unit because Ginobili can come off the bench and make things happen, including shooting threes. You need your, your shock troops to come in 